Hi and welcome back. In this episode we'll become hackers and scrap some data from Board Games Geek website. This way we'll have data to work with, plus we'll figure out the shape of the board game model. So let's get started. So why do I want to scrap data? Why not to use Board Games Geek API directly, for example? Well, the answer is their API is not really good for our purposes. Plus, it gives us control over the data and gives us opportunity to master database search and indexing in the future. So here is an example of a board game page on the boardgamegeek.com. And we want to parse and get all the data we need for this particular game, for example, Gloomhaven. Very popular one. Okay, so let's have a look into the page source. This website is very old and recently they modernized their game page. So for example, if we go to the main page, it's still old 90s style, something like this. Ugh. Okay, but the new pages are a little bit more modernized and I think they use um, Angular for that because you can see here uh, ng stuff. I think I saw somewhere. Yeah, ng control, etc. And you can see here in the script, they have this geek global object. And inside of it, there is a geek geek item preload. And here in this object, there is the whole information that you ever need about the game. This is very convenient for our purposes. So all we need to do is just to get this page, parse it, get this geek object, and then just compose our own object that we want to have. So let's try to do that. So right now I'm in the view project, but I'm gonna cd up one folder. So here I am in BG series. And here I will just create new directory for scraper. I will call it and I'm gonna cd into it. And I will just yarn in it dash y to create package.json file. So in this episode, I'll show you the basics on which you can expand. Well, I will not give you the complete solution of how to get all thousands of games from the website, but you can easily solve this issue as an exercise. So here in Vim, I'm just going to create, let's say, scraper.js file. To get the page, we just need to make the get request. We can do it with access. And to query the page for particular elements in it, we're gonna use Cheerio. So I will just install them, yarn add, access, and Cheerio. Okay, let's go back and let's require access and Cheerio. So we're gonna do it in small steps. First step is just to get the page and get this huge geek object that they have on the page. First of all, let's save the URL to the page. So this is the Gloomhaven page. I'm just going to go back here and just copy it and paste it here. Okay, this is our Gloomhaven page. And then I'm going to create a sync function. I will call it run or start, doesn't actually matter. And at the bottom here, I will just run it. So async because we're going to use a synchronous request with access. So this is the first thing that we're gonna do. Const response equals to await access get gloom, gloomhaven. Now that we have it, we have the whole page in res.data. So we can initialize Cheerio. And Cheerio uses this convention of dollar sign as jQuery because it uses very similar API. So we initialize Cheerio and we load res data on it. So now we can query this page. Next, let's define code variable. And basically if we go back to our page here to the source, you will see that we have script. The first script tag is the one that we need. There are other script tags here, but the first one is the one that we want to have. And I must say that we actually build in the throwaway script. We use it once and we never ever use it again because we're gonna have the data that we need. So there is no need to over-engineer it. It just need to work. So you can see here, there are a lot of other scripts here, but we are interested only in this first one. So to do that, I will use the Cheerio API to find this script tag. And then I will iterate for each of them. It takes index, it gives us index and the element itself. Okay, so first of all, I want to make sure that this element has children and this particular child, the first one, actually has data. So children, zero, dot data. Okay, so if we have it, 
then we need to um, to check if it's not code so basically if it's undefined because now at the first it's undefined we get the first children we get the first script we get the children we make sure that it has the content the script content and if code is not defined yet then we assign code to be element children first one data this check is just the safety net basically so what we do here is we get in the first script, we make sure that it has data inside of it, and then we assign this data to the code. For all other scripts, we just ignore them. After we have this code, we need to evaluate it to get the geek object. So we're going to use eval code. And after that, let's just console.log this geek object. Because after evaluation, the geek object should be the global object. So I'm going to save it. Let's go to terminal and let's run scraper. And here we go. We have the geek object and you can see here it's a huge one. And all the information about the game is here in the geek item preload object. Nice. Another thing that I uh, want to point out, let's try another game, this root game. And if I query query for root let's make it again now if I scroll up to the description of the root game you will see that it has uh, this anchor tag and you can see it points to the slash board game blah 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 but it will not actually point in our application to this right I actually want this link to have the absolute path to the board games gig okay just a note because it will come up soon enough okay now that we have this geek object we can go further we can have the constant game that equals to geek object geek item preload dot item and now we can construct our result so i just constructed it beforehand so i will have the result object here so first thing, I want, of course, to have the name and I get it from the game primary name, that name, then BGG item ID, just to keep the reference to the BGG item. So we have the item ID, BGG object ID, game object ID, um, BGG href is a good one. So we'll have game href. So this way we can link back to the BGG page. BGG stands for Board Game Geek. So then I would want to have the published year and that's going to be the number. So I want to cast it to the numbers because all the data right now are strings. So I will have game year published. And the same thing I want to do with several other fields. So the first one here will be min players allowed to the game. Min, min players. And the same thing for max players. Another thing is min play time, just to get the idea of the average duration. Min play time. And the same thing here, max play time. Okay, and of course I need to have the description. And here is where this knowledge about the links come up. So I could do just game description and that should do, but I will be very sneaky and I'm going to replace href that equals to something inside of uh, quotes globally. So here it will be just the group of all characters and I will replace it with href equals to quotes HTTPS board game geek dot com. And then the thing that we caught in our regular expression. Another thing that I want to have is the target equals to blank. Okay, last thing that I want to hard code here is the source. So we'll have source is BGG. And I'm doing it here because I'm trying to predict the future because not all games will be created by searching in BGG. I want to allow users to create their own games with their own names, etc., etc. So in this case, the source will be, for example, custom, or even it belongs to some user. Other thing that I want to catch is, of course, thumbnails. So I will have thumbnail, and that equals to game images 
thumb. And another cool thing that I could have is the square thumbnail. And that's cool because it makes it much easier to design the lined layout of games. So we'll have game images square 200. Okay, so this is our object. So we have the name, we have all the information that we need to display to the user. Now let's console.log it and have a look. So we'll console log result. Let's save it and let's have a go. Hey there, just a quick self-promotion. If you like what I do, find it valuable and want to support my work, I encourage you to go to jsfullstacker.com. There you can become a member for just $13 per month and you'll get access to all content that I've already published, plus five new episodes each week and access to Slack community where you can ask questions and get updates. You can cancel anytime, no questions asked. Link in the description. And now, back to the video. Let's run. And look at this. And you can see here in the root, we actually have the absolute link to the HTTPS, boardgamegeek.com, etc. Nice. So this is the object that we want to insert into our database. And we will use this object to create the migration to our database, etc. But that's not all. There are two things that we need to think about. So the first one is rating. So if we go back to the BGG, you will see that it has this rating stuff. And I actually want to display the rating from Board Game Geek because it's very popular uh, resource, the, the huge resource. And I could do that. I could get the uh, rating with the help of, for example, rating, and I will could parse float it from string and get it from game stats uh, average rating like this. But the problem is that this rating can change with time. Especially that's true for new games that coming up to the market and after a couple of weeks or even months they constantly change in rating, becoming better, getting to the top lists, etc. So I do not want to do that. Instead of hard coding rating, we actually will make the API request to get the rating for a particular game when user actually selects the game. I think that would be much better. Another thing, not every game is a game. Again, if you go back here to the Gloomhaven, you can see that actually there are some expansions to it. Let's go and have a look. So here is, for example, expansion for the Gloomhaven. Okay? I want to get the expansions in my database as well. But they're not games. They're separate entities. We need to make sure that we mark these games as an expansion to the specific game. So let's copy this expansion link here. Go back and let's create new constant that's going to be just expansion so now before creating this result here i'm going to create another constant i will call it is expansion and it equals to game subtype and if it equals to board game expansion then it is expansion and then i want to have it in my object so first of all i want to have the x uh, is expand Another thing that I want to have is the link to the game that it is expansion to. So we'll have the board game ID and that equals to if it is expansion then we'll have the number and we get the game links dot expand expands board game the first one object ID Okay, otherwise it's just null. So this kind of stuff is actually where I just made my research and I just show it to you. How did I know about this? Well, I started this geek object. I started what it has, how this expansion is connected to actual games, how can I get this expansion um, number here, the object ID, so all of this stuff. Here I just showing you the result, but in actual, in real life, you will have to do this legwork by yourself. You need to study the page, this, uh, the data structure, etc, etc. So let's try it again with node scrapper. Okay, I have the error with max play time. I think it's a typo, but here is expansion is false and board game ID is null. That's exactly what we want to see. So max playtime, let's, let's do it playtime, yeah, like this. Okay, so now let's make request to the expansion, 
instead of root. Let's save it, go back here, gonna clean it. And here we go, it is an expansion and we have the game board game ID here so we can get the actual game for this expansion. Excellent. Great, so now we have very nice object and that's going to be the shape of our board game model we're gonna create in the next episode. So using this code, you can find out the way to get all games in your database, but I'll leave it up to you. So here is I'm in, uh, in Postico and that's another uh, database and here is the games collection that I fetched or scraped from the board game geek. And you can see here that it's more than 100,000 games in here. So yeah, you can do it. And why do I want to have the whole database instead of just 10 or 20 uh, items in it? Because I want to test search abilities properly. And you will see what I mean when we get to the search stuff. But there is no need for you to repeat this fit. Um, 10 or 20 games will be more than enough for our purposes during developing the application until we get to the search and optimizing the search. Okay, great. So we learned how easy it is to create throwaway scraper scripts with JavaScript and Node. Hope that it was fun. In the next episode, we'll start on designing a new game form. See you in the next one.